So guys what if Naruto was eternal guardian parents in Yasaka movie 1? In a Japanese style room in Kyoto, two beings, both yokai, were pacing back and forth as they discussed an important matter. One was an old Tengu that had been serving the faction leader for a long while another was a Kitsune yokai that served as the caretaker for the yokai faction leader's daughter. Any luck in locating her Tora? The Kitsune yokai asked. None so far. Rin, Tora, the old Tengu replied. It is unfortunate that we would have to ask the big three for help in this but you know the risks, it has been weeks since Yasaka-sama was abducted, the ley lines will start to destabilize soon if she is not found and the risk is not only to us but also the entire world, how is Kunoheim doing? Tora said. Not well, she still worries greatly of her mother and is not yet ready to handle the ley line flow, it's a wonder we are still going. The clan heads are working round the clock to pick up the slack but there is nothing we can really do until we find Yusaka-sama, Rin said. Poor Kuno, she must be so worried about her mother, it's times like this that I wished that he would awaken already, Tora said. Yes, I am sure this matter would be resolved quickly or maybe even not occur had he been awake but alas we can only wait for him to awaken after the unfortunate events of that day, Yusaka-sama was never the same since that day. She only smiled a genuine smile when spending time with Kuno, it was as though a part of her disappeared when he went into his slumber, Rin said. Of course it did, those two were so in love with each other, they helped one another so much, he helped her become a great leader and she helped him overcome his pain, Tora said with a bittersweet smile. Yes, at first all the clans were against their union on the grounds of keeping the Kitsune clan of pure blood but he never was one to care about the opinions of others and his power was more than capable of covering any excuse the elders came up with to try and stop their union, not like they could have stopped the two anyway, Rin said recalling fond memories of a much happier time. You know I always wonder what would happen if Kunoheim grew up with her father's guidance, Tora said. Yes. Although I'd imagine she would be much more of a troublemaker based on his personality and what he was like as a child, Rin said with a sad smile. But you cannot deny the fact that his heart of gold and dedication to his loved ones would be good traits for Kuno to follow, Tora said. Yes if only Naruto-sama were awake now, Rin said letting the statement hang in the air for a moment before both yokai felt a powerful burst of power from below them, a power that was both dense and voluminous but yet felt warm and enveloping. Rin, this power, could it be? Tora asked. It's not impossible, he was supposed to return after around nine years and it's almost been ten, it was supposed to take a year for every tale and he was likely to awaken soon according to Yusaka-sama, Rin said. He seems to always pick the most opportune times, I don't know if it's luck or if it's coincidence, Tora said with a chuckle. I think it's about time that Kunoheim gets to meet her father. Rin said as she went to a room and knocked on it a few times before entering, the room was large and filled with luxurious furniture befitting the princess of the yokai faction, the cloths were mostly orange with some hints of red and yellow mixed in. Rin san, what was that burst of power just now? It felt warm and familiar, Kuno said. That Kuno Haim was your father, it would seem that your father has finally awakened from his slumber, would you like to meet him? Rin asked as she hugged the blonde-haired girl. Otu-sama is awake, can we go see him now? Kuno asked. Yes of course Kuno Haim, please follow me, since he has woken up we should greet him, he will be most pleased to see you all grown up now, after all, he only got to see you when you were a little child, Rin said as he led Kuno down the hall and into a secret passageway. Will he be happy to see me? Will he love me? Kuno asked as her ears flattened against her head showing how much the doubts were affecting her. Rin pet her charge's head lovingly. Naruto-sama will absolutely love you, before he went into his slumber. His thoughts were about you and Yasaka-sama, he has always desired to have a family that he could raise and protect. Something that he lacked when he was growing up, when Yasaka had told him that she was having you, he was running around the palace grounds in joy and kept shouting how he was going to become a father, Rin said with a giggle at that memory leaving out the fact that Naruto had destroyed a mountain range by accident when he got too excited by the news of being a father, the pair arrived a a set of heavy doors that had a complex runic array on it. The door is still closed, how do we get in? Kuno asked as he tried to enter the room only to find the door closed. The seal on the door requires a relative of Naruto-sama or Yasaka-sama to open, it was to prevent anyone from trying to kill Naruto-sama in his slumber or to prevent anyone from trying to steal his powers, 
You just need to bite your thumb and smear some blood on the seal for it to open, Rin said, Kuno did as told and the array glowed for a moment before the door clicked and swung open. Otu-sama, Kuno asked shyly as she walked into the dimly lit room, she saw a throne where a blonde-haired man with whisker marks was seated, his eyes were closed but behind him were ten radiant golden tails. Is that you Kuno? Naruto said as he finally opened his eyes, showing yellow eyes that had a cross-shaped pupil, he ran towards Kuno who did the same, the two meeting in the middle as Kuno was pulled into a hug by Naruto, immediately feeling safe and loved in his arms as his energy seemed to flow around her. Otu-sama, I finally get to see you after so long, I've always wondered what you looked like, Kuno said as she started crying happy tears. Oh Kuno, I've always wanted to see you, you are all grown up now, I am sorry for leaving you and your mother alone for so long, I am so sorry I had to go to sleep and never got the opportunity to show you a life with a father's guidance that I had promised your mother, if only I had been more careful that day, Naruto said as he started shedding happy tears at being reunited with his beloved daughter. But if it wasn't for Otu-sama then me and Oka-sama wouldn't be alive now, Otu-sama beat the bad man who tried to kidnap me for my potential and wasn't willing to let me live after you beat him, Kuno said having been told about her father and how he had taken a fatal hit when protecting both Kuno and Yusaka from a man who wanted to take Kuno for her power. Speaking of your Oka-sama, where is she? Is she out having a meeting or just relaxing or something? I can't feel her in the immediate vicinity. Naruto asked and immediately noticed the depression on her daughter's face. Oka-sama is gone. Someone took her away. Kuno said as now tears of sadness replaced the previous joyful ones. Shish. Kuno don't cry now. Your Otu-sama will bring back your Oka-sama. You should only cry out of happiness. Sad tears like these don't suit a beautiful princess like yourself. Naruto said as he used his thumb to wipe away her tears. Really? You promised to bring Oka-sama back? Kuno said, her eyes filled with hope. Of course, I promise I will being your mother back. After all, what kind of husband would I be if I just left my wife in trouble? Rin, it's been a long time, how have you been doing? Did Yasaka assign you as Kuno's guardian? Naruto asked as he turned his attention to the other person in the room. Yes it has been nine years Naruto-sama, I have been looking after Kuno whenever Yusaka-sama has been busy with matters, if you could forgive my curiosity but why do you have ten tails instead of nine? Kurama-sama said that the process would turn you into a Kyubi hybrid, Rin said, Naruto sighed and stood at full height, running a hand through his hair as Kuno held onto to his leg. Well, it would seem that during the merging process, the power I got from Hagoromo as well as the other biju ended up being fused in my person as well thus turning me into a pseudo-jubi, now then, if you could I would like an update on what has been happening over the nine years as well as what happened to my wife, Naruto said. Quite a lot has happened in the years that you were asleep, the supernatural factions are entering peace treaties following the lead of the big three and a more permanent peace between factions is being sought out now, Rin explained. That is wonderful news, although I believe there is a big but to this entire matter since the supernatural factions, especially the big three would never agree to something like that so easily, Naruto said. Yes there is, a group called the Koa's Brigade, made up of the rogue aspects of all factions has made themselves known under the leadership of Ophis the Infinite Dragon God, all the other factions see them as a threat and have banded together to combat them, Rin explained. And what happened to Yasaka? Naruto said. We are not certain of what has happened to Yasaka-sama but she disappeared a few weeks ago and the ley lines are starting to destabilize with her absence, we have been combing the entire area of Kyoto but have been unable to find a single trace of her or a hint to her location, Rin said. I see, well then the first order of business is to settle the matter of the build equals up of energy in the ley lines, I believe this room is linked to the main ley line. Naruto asked. Yes it is. Yasaka-sama intended to shift the leyline control point to this location once you awaken from your slumber, Rin said. Good, Naruto replied as he placed Kuno on his shoulder and went to sit on his throne once more. He closed his eyes and felt the buildup of energy in the leylines due to missing a focal point. He concentrated and drew the energy into himself, feeling it saturate his body as his whole being was encased in a shroud of gold flames with a black undershirt. Six Magatama markings appeared around his neck as two bangs of hair stood up like horns, behind him, ten black balls hovered in a circular formation, Kuno hummed happily as the warmth of the power filled her being, 
telling her that she would be forever safe if she was near her father. I have located Yasaka. I will be going to find her now, Naruto said as he stood up, placing Kuno on the throne before walking to the center of the room. Can I come along with you to find Oka-sama? Kuno asked. Naruto mulled over the question for a moment, not wanting to put his daughter in danger. I will let you follow me on one condition, you have to follow my instructions without question, Naruto said. Kuno nodded frantically in agreement, Naruto smiled at his daughter before a golden arm grabbed her and settled her on his shoulder. We will be going now, Naruto said as he focused his chakra to go to the marker on his wife. Please return safely Naruto-sama, Rin said before there was a golden flash and both Naruto and Kuno were gone. I wonder where we are, this looks like a fake Kyoto created in a separate dimension, Naruto mused as he made his way towards the location where he felt Yasaka's energy, the barrier surrounding this place had prevented him from teleporting anywhere near her but the marker was still strong enough for him to enter this dimension. What is this place Otusama? It looks just like Kyoto but it doesn't feel like Kyoto, Kuno said as she hugged her father's neck tightly. This is a fake Kyoto in a pocket dimension that someone created, most likely with a sacred gear, dimension lost if I my memory is correct, Naruto said as they spotted Yasaka lying down unconscious in the center of the town, Naruto set Kuno down and she set about shaking Yasaka's body. Oka-sama, wake up, it's me Kuno. Otusama is here too, Otusama why want Oka-sama wake up? Kuno said as she was frantically trying to shake her mother awake as tears poured down her face. It's alright Kuno, your mother is just under a trance, see, she's not responding but she is fine, Naruto said not wanting to see his daughter cry while trying to figure out why someone would kidnap Yasaka only to not use her for anything for so long. Come on Kuno, let's get your mother and get out of here. Naruto said as he placed Kuno on his shoulder again and picked Yasaka up in a bridal carry, absentmindedly noting her more voluptuous body than what he remembered. I am afraid I can't allow you to leave with the Kayubi, a voice said before a black-haired young man appeared holding a spear that Naruto recognized as the true Longinus, a blonde-haired young woman appeared next to him together with two other males, one with a very well-built body and one with silver hair and a pretty boy appearance. And just who might you be? Naruto asked. We could say the same thing about you, now just put down the Kayubi and leave before we kill you and the girl, the well-billed man sneered. I can't do that, you see I just woke up and would like to spend some time with my wife and daughter and you are currently in my way, Naruto said as his eyes narrowed. I apologize for my colleague's rudeness, I am Sao Sao, descendant of Sao Sao, this is Siegfried, the descendant of the legendary Siegfried, that man is Heracles the descendant of Hercules, and that is Jean, descendant of Joe and Ark, the man with the spear introduced, pointing to the silver-haired male, then the well-built man and lastly the girl. You are all part of the Chaos Brigade yet you are all human, what did you want with my wife? You either wanted to turn Kyoto into a large bomb by destabilizing the ley lines or you wanted to open a dragon gate, I'd wager that it was the latter, Naruto said. You are correct there, I didn't know that another QB existed though, Unfortunate that we have to bring that number down so that you do not interfere with our plan to summon Great Red, before we kill you, could we have the pleasure of knowing your name, Sao Sao said. I am Naruto Uzumaki, and you should get your eyes checked because I am a Jubi not a Kyubi, Naruto said as his aura flared. Impressive, I have never heard of a Jubi before, I look forward to fighting you, Sao Sao said. I will give you this once chance. Tell the Dimension Lost user to release us and I will spare your lives, I do not enjoy taking lives, Naruto said. I don't care if you're god. I am going to beat you with my power, I hope you can at least give me a good fight, Heracles said as he charged at Naruto, fist poised to strike at his head only to stop halfway as a black rod pierced his abdomen, behind Naruto, only nine of the black balls were left. The rod that pierced Heracles retracted and turned back into a ball and returned to its spot behind Naruto as Harakal's body fell to the ground, the area of the wound disintegrating. Last chance, call off dimension lost now, I don't take threats to the people I care about lightly, Naruto said. I am afraid we can't do that, Sao Sao said as they prepared for battle. I gave you a chance, Naruto said sadly as several golden energy limbs lashed out towards the three of them. Georg was picked up and ripped in half while Sao Sao was stabbed by a truth-seeking orb that had turned into a spear. 
I'll let you leave because I can see and feel your apprehension towards their cause. But do not mistake this mercy for weakness if any of you come after those I care again. Your death will be much more painful and drawn out, Naruto said as he held Yusaka up using energy limbs and created a single staff from the truth-seeking orbs, it was in the form of a shikuho like Hagoromo's, he slammed the end into the ground and the pocket dimension shimmered before it collapsed, revealing a bespectacled young man, Naruto just frowned at him before disappearing in a yellow flash to tend to his wife. Naruto-sama. You've returned safely with Yasaka-sama, this is good news, Rin said as Naruto, Kuno who was on his shoulder and the unconscious Yasaka in his arms appeared in the room. Yes, I managed to locate her and get rid of the Chaos Brigade, odd that it was humans that did this, they had the true Longinus and Dimension Lost user with them, and I suspect that the Annihilation Maker user was close by for support as well, Naruto mused as he set Yasaka gently onto the hard floor. Please forgive us for not being able to rescue Yasaka-sama and forcing you to save her so soon after your awakening, Rin said as she knelt before him. Get up Rin, there is no need to apologize, none of you would have been able to reach Yasaka anyway because she was in a separate dimension created by the dimension lost. A fake Kyoto in fact, this makes me believe that they pulled her in while she was out one day and fooled her into thinking that she was in Kyoto, allowing them to surprise her. Her abductors were weak and I highly doubt Yasaka would have lost to them had she been fighting them properly, true Longinus or not, Naruto said as he looked over his unconscious wife. Otu-sama, will Oka-sama wake up soon? Kuno asked worriedly. Relax Kuno, I am going to wake your mother up now so that we can be a happy family from now on, Naruto said as he placed two fingers on Yasaka's forehead and dived into her subconscious to wake her up. It's been a long time Yasaka. Naruto said lovingly as he saw the image of his wife in her mind. Naruto. Yasaka said shakily, not certain if this person in front of her was actually her husband. Yes it is me, I've returned Yasaka, Naruto said as he opened his arms, Yasaka rushed towards him and gave a hug, the two staying in content silence for a long while, Naruto closed his eyes as he drunk in the familiar scent and power of his wife and Yasaka was crying tears of joy at finally being reunited with her husband. Wait, but the last thing I remember was the Chaos Brigade kidnapping me and planning to use me to open a dragon gate, what happened to them? Yasaka asked. I have taken care of them, now then, it's time for you to wake up dear, our daughter is worried about you, Naruto said as Yasaka felt the world go white before finding herself in a dimly lit room, she took a while to adjust and sat up before feeling a small golden blur impact against her body. Oka-sama, you're awake. I was so worried when you disappeared, Kuno said as she hugged her mother and started to cry tears of joy. I am sorry for making you worry like that Kuno, I promise I won't let myself be taken by surprise like that again, Yusaka said as she hugged her daughter, she felt another set of arms wrap around both of them and immediately relaxed when she recognized the person. We are finally together dear, just like it should have been those years ago, Yusaka said as she leaned against the muscular chest that was pressed against her body. Yes, we are finally together as a family, just like it should have been and nothing will keep us apart ever again, Naruto said, echoing her words. I should leave them alone for now, I am sure they deserve to have some peace and quiet as a family, I am sure a few more days of searching for nothing won't matter too much, I'll let them deal with it later on, Rin said, leaving the family alone in the room with a foxy smirk on her face. And this is the rest of the paperwork that requires your attention by today, Yusaka said as she placed another stack of paperwork on the desk. What the hell is all of this? If this is what it meant to be Hokage then I wonder what could have possessed me to ever want the job in the first place, Naruto groaned as he pulled a paper from the top of the stack, reading it and signing it before throwing it into a stack of completed papers. Oh relax, you only have another three hours to go before your day is done and we can have a nice family dinner, Yusaka said. I am done doing this the normal way. Naruto said as he created several shadow clones to handle the paperwork before grabbing a bowl of ramen that somehow materialized out of thin air, just as he was about to take a slurp of the food of the gods, he was smacked upside the head by a Harrison wielding Yusaka. Itai, what was that for Yusaka? Naruto said as he rubbed his head while crying over the spilled ramen. You know you aren't supposed to be eating ramen so often especially not during work hours, honestly. It's bad enough that you got our daughter addicted to the unhealthy junk, I am not going to let this family eat ramen all the time, 
Yasaka said while glaring at her husband who cowered in fear. But Yasaka dear, ramen is the food of the gods. It's like edible heaven. To deny people from eating it is like dooming people to life of torture, Naruto said. Oh that is enough from you, you man child, get back to your work, Yusaka chided. You sly vixen, ill bet this was one of the reasons why you gave me your job as leader of the yokai faction, you just didn't want to deal with all this paperwork, quite the prank you pulled on me Yusaka, it'll be sure to get you back for this or I am not the prank king Naruto, Naruto said with a grin that made Yusaka shudder. Now now dear, you must understand that it puts the yokai faction in a much better light to have a ten tails as the leader besides as my husband, the leadership is rightly yours for I am your mate and everything that is mine is yours, Yusaka said. I call bullshit on that, you just don't want to deal with politics and paperwork anymore, Naruto said as he slammed his head into the desk from the amount of work he had to deal with. It had been two weeks since Naruto had awakened from his nearly decade-long slumber. He had spent the week of private time to get to know his family better, he spent time getting to know Kuno and mending their relationship as father and daughter, Naruto had also spent time with Yasaka, although most of their private time was spent making passionate love to one another to make up for their absence. I still can't believe that after creating a stable relationship with my daughter I might have another child on the way, you were completely insatiable, Naruto said as he raised his head from his desk only to see Yusaka with her tongue sticking out at him in a mocking gesture. Hey I can't help it, I was celibate for almost a decade and went through nearly five heat cycles without my mate, a girl has needs too you know, Yusaka said with a cute pout, Naruto appeared in front of her and pulled her into an embrace, their lips connecting in a passionate lock, they broke apart after some time, Yusaka laying her head against his chest. And I have every intention of fulfilling all of my wife's needs, Naruto said. As much as I would like to have fun, we just got contacted by the big three and they wish to meet with the new leader of the yokai faction, Yusaka said. Did you specify a time? Naruto asked. I told them a week from now would be a good time and they agreed although no specific time was given, Yusaka said. I presume I will be meeting with Michael, Sirzex and Azazel. Naruto asked. That's right. Although the devils might send Seraphal instead since she is the one in charge of foreign affairs, Yusaka said. I see, Naruto said as he nuzzled his cheek on the top of Yusaka's head. Naruto dear, Yusaka said. Yes my beloved Yusaka, Naruto responded. Get back to work, Yusaka ordered as Naruto could only lower his head in defeat and return to his place behind the desk while muttering thing about sadistic vixens. This is so boring, Naruto whined. My clones are already doing all the work so I don't understand why I still have to be stuck in this stuffy office. Oh fine just today you can have your clones do your work for you, Yusaka relented. Yay. Now we can go see what's Kuno up to and maybe teach her some of my techniques, Naruto shouted in joy only to be bopped on the head by a Harrison wielding Yusaka. You will only be teaching techniques that I allow you, no need to have her blowing up a yard or a mountain by accident. I also don't want her getting hurt, Yusaka chided. Fine fine, does she know the Rasengan? Naruto asked. No, her chakra control isn't exactly the greatest considering the fact that she inherited some of your reserves and her chakra is almost as dense as yours, Yusaka said. Oh then I have just the training for her, does she know tree and water walking? Naruto asked. Of course she does, I made sure to at least teach her the basics of that for daily use, although there are times when I regret teaching them to her because she uses them to play pranks so often, really makes her your daughter, Yusaka said. Hey what was that supposed to mean? Naruto said with an indignant squawk. Nothing dear, so what do you plan to teach her? Yusaka asked. I don't see how you think her control was bad, it's much better than mine was until I was much older, I think teaching her the Rasengan will be a good idea using the method I used to teach it to you, Naruto said. Wait that exercise works for anyone. Yusaka asked surprised. Yeah, you thought it was specially for you. I am not smart enough to come up with specialized ways of teaching jutsu to individuals you know, Naruto deadpant. I guess that is true you weren't exactly the brightest light bulb when we first met, Yusaka said with a giggle while Naruto mock glared at her. Anyway, I sense Kuno at the mansion and if memory serves correctly she should just be about done with her lessons for the day so we can head out for lunch and then some training after that, now let's get going, Naruto said as he grabbed Yusaka and teleported back to their home. Mo, 
I am so bored. Oka-sama and Otu-sama won't be home for a few more hours and I have nothing to do. Maybe I should go outside for lunch today, but Rin-san has already made me lunch, Kuno said to herself until she heard knocking on the door. Hey there Kuno, how has your day been? Naruto asked as he entered his daughter's room, his wife close behind him. Otu-sama, Oka-sama, why are the two of you back so early? Kuno asked happily as she glomped her father. Well, I am having clones do the work today so that I can spend some time with you, we're going out to have a nice picnic then I am going to teach you something really cool, does that sound like a plan? Naruto asked. Kuno nodded happily and placed her on his shoulder before walking out, Yusaka went to collect the food from Rin and the small family headed off to a nice secluded spot that brought many memories to Naruto. What is this place Otusama? Kuno asked as she took in the surroundings, it was a lush open field that was surrounded by trees and had a large lake and waterfall tucked away in the corner. This place is the training field that I made some time ago and where I thought your Oka-sama some of my techniques as well as my unique way of using chakra, Naruto explained as Yusaka set down the basket and started laying down the mats and food. But if this is a training field how come it is so beautiful? Wouldn't it be damaged from all of Otu-sama and Oka-sama's cool techniques? Kuno asked while putting a finger under her chin and tilting her head cutely, it took all of Naruto's willpower to not grab his daughter and hug the life out of her while shouting how cute she was. That Kuno is the power of Fuenjutsu, it allows this training field to self-repair given enough time, prevents the effects of any attacks spreading beyond the local area and also prevents unwanted people from entering or discovering this location, me and your mother used to come here often when we wanted some peace and quiet, Naruto explained as he set Kuno down since he saw that Yusaka was done setting up the things for the picnic. The reason we came here is because your father wanted to show you something that I am sure you will like after lunch, Yusaka said while Naruto gave a mock glare for spoiling the surprise that he had planned. Really? What are you going to show me? A really cool technique. A really cool. What did Oka-sama call them again, Jutsu? Kuno asked. It's Jutsu Kuno dear and no spoilers until you finish your lunch and that is only if you are a good girl and eat your veggies, Rin and your mother tell me you haven't been eating your veggies, Naruto chided while picking up a bowl of ramen and digging in. Mo do I have too. Veggies are gross and I really want to see some of Otusama's cool jutsu now, Kuno whined. Sorry Kuno but if you don't eat your veggies then no cool jutsu, veggies are important for you, you know when I was a kid no one told me the importance of eating veggies and as a result my growth was stunted, I don't want that happening to you, Naruto said. Nay to san, who were your parents? Oka-sama tells me that they were great people who loved you a lot but never brought me to see them, Kuno asked. My parents were great people who died the day I was born, so you probably won't get to meet them ever but I can tell you about them, and I know for certain that they would have loved you, Naruto said. Oh. I am sorry if talking about it makes you sad Otusama, Kuno said as her ears were flat against her head, feeling guilty at bringing up painful memories, she took a bowl and started eating. It's alright Kuno, I think it would be good to tell you about them. Well let's start off with my mother Kashina Uzumaki. She was a hot-headed one and used to beat up the boys who insulted her hair. In fact she used to mock my dad for being effeminate, but then a rival village tried to kidnap her for her power. My mother left a trail of her hair discreetly but no one except my dad picked up on it, they fell in love shortly after my dad rescued her from her kidnappers, she was strong, one of the strongest in the village in fact, her chakra was so uniquely dense that she could create solid chains from them and she was an excellent swordswoman, Naruto said, pausing to eat his ramen. Then there was my dad Minato Namikaze, the fourth Hokage. He was the leader of the village for a short while before he died and was one of the few people to have ever gotten a flea on sight order. He had two signature techniques and was known as the Yellow Flash. He was partially responsible for the end of the Third Shinobi World War by repelling a battalion of Iwa Shinobi, Naruto explained. What happened to the two of them? Kuno asked out of curiosity. Well it happened on October 10th, the night of my birth. Naruto started as he explained the events that lead to Kurama being sealed into him and him becoming an orphan. Well then it looks like you've finished your food, Naruto said after finishing his story and slurping up whatever was left in his bowl. Sorry if you were a little bored by this dear, Naruto said as he looked at Yusaka apologetically since he figured she was bored having heard this story before. 
No it was fine, just having this family time with you and Kuno is enough for me, Yasaka said with a serene smile that made Naruto give her a soft peck on the lips before he turned his attention back to his daughter. Well then Kuno since you were a good girl and finished your veggies I am going to teach you my father's signature jutsu, he created it and I completed it, it's called the Rasengan, Naruto explained as he created a Rasengan in his hand. Oh what does it do? Kuno asked as she eyed the sphere from all angles. The Rasengan is a ball of kinetic energy that requires no hand signs, incantations or runes to cast, it was designed for high speed, another benefit of the Rasengan is that it is self-sustaining, once created, you don't need to put any more chakra into it to keep it going, to put its effect in simple terms, it drills into whatever it comes into contact with, watch, Naruto said as he walked up to a tree and slammed the Rasengan into it, turning it into splinters. Oh I want to learn how to do that. Kuno said excitedly. And you will my dear, the Rasengan is also a stepping stone to greater chakra control and also much more powerful techniques when combined with elements, the Rasengan takes shape manipulation to the highest degree and can be learnt in three steps, rotation, power and control, now watch, Naruto said as he conjured up a bucket of water balloons, he picked one up and held it in his hand, the water inside swirled for a moment before the balloon burst. Now you try, this is the rotation step. All you need to do is burst the water balloon from the inside by swirling your chakra around, Naruto said as he handed a water balloon to Kuno. So all I need to do is swirl the water inside using my chakra and cause it to burst. Kuno asked. It's a lot simpler than it sounds, go ahead and give it a try, Naruto said as Kuno had a look of absolute concentration that Naruto couldn't help but chuckle at. The water balloon swirled a little but didn't burst, causing Kuno to frown, she closed her eyes and tried again, still not getting much further than her first attempt. Just keep at it and you will get it, it took me a week to complete learning the Rasengan and that was just the last stage so don't be sad if you can't get it. Naruto said as he went to lean against a nearby tree, Yusaka plopped herself onto his lap and made herself comfortable, her head was leaning against his chest as he wrapped an arm around her waist while another was petting between her ears, causing her to let out sounds of contentment, eventually Yusaka dozed off while Naruto relaxed but still kept an eye out on Kuno, the hours passed and before long the sun was already close to the horizon. Yusaka dear, wake up, Naruto said softly as he shook his wife awake. Huh, Naruto what time is it? Yusaka asked as she yawned cutely and stretched her body, giving Naruto an eyeful of her jiggling chest. It's almost sunset and as much as I want to enjoy this wonderful sight with my beautiful wife and daughter I think it's about time we head back, Naruto said as Yusaka got off him, he stood up and went to check on Kuno. Hey there Kuno, how is the training coming along? Naruto asked since he had dozed off for a while. I did it Otu-sama, see, Kuno said as she grabbed a water balloon and burst it in front of her father, panting from the exhaustion. That's great Kuno, you did it much faster than me. Granted your chakra control is leaps and bounds ahead of mine was when I was your age, Naruto said. Otu-sama, I feel a little light-headed, Kuno said as she struggled a little to walk. You're just exhausted after all that training, rest for now, Naruto said as he carried her in his arms, Kuno snuggled deeper into her father and quickly fell asleep. Shall we head back, Yasaka asked after she picked up the picnic basket. Yeah let's get going but I think we should take the more scenic route, I think Kuno likes where she is right now, Naruto spoke with a hint of mirth as he looked at his daughter who was sleeping peacefully in his arms, Yusaka had a smile on her face and wrapped her arm around Naruto's and they walked back towards their home. Time skip. A week later. Naruto was seated on his formal throne in the room that was once the chamber where he was sealed in. Yusaka was seated on a similar throne next to him, both were waiting for the arrival of the leaders of the big three and this was the way that they would usually receive important guests unless there was paperwork to sign then they would meet in the office that was in the room next to this one, a knock was heard on the heavy doors, Naruto flicked his fingers and the doors opened, a Tengu walked in and bowed before speaking. Naruto-sama, Yusaka-sama, the leaders of the big three, Lucifer-sama, Azazel-sama and Michael-sama are here, the Tengu said as three men entered. The first man had golden blonde hair and a radiant aura and wore formal robes, the second man had black hair with blonde tips and wore a purple long coat and pants, the third man had crimson hair and was dressed in formal robes as well but with a clearly different motif, 
The Tengu excused itself and left the room, the doors closing behind him. It's nice to see the leaders of the three factions again, it's been more than a decade since I've run into any of you and never in all my years would I have predicted that I would be meeting all three of them at once, Naruto said to all of them with a smile. It has indeed been a long time since we spoke Naruto Dono, Michael said. You disappeared without a trace for almost a decade, I am sorry if I sound rude but did something happen? Sirzex asked with a kind smile. Someone attacked on the night of my daughter's birth, a rouge from the devil faction under orders from one Rizbam Levon Lucifer, Naruto said as Sirzex frowned upon hearing that news. I apologize greatly for that, Sirzex said with a bow. Don't worry about that, it's in the past, besides you told me that Rizbam isn't under your control and tends to do what he likes so I wouldn't in good conscience hold a grudge against the devils for the actions of one, Naruto said waving off the apology. If you might pardon me asking but short of Rizbam himself, there was no way the assailant could have caused any trouble for you, so what happened? Azazel asked out of curiosity. He didn't. I dispatched him with ease, however, I neglected to ensure that he was dead and he tried to kill my wife who was exhausted from childbirth and my newborn daughter with a poison-throwing knife, seeing no other option I took the hit and was forced to enter a long slumber to recuperate by merging with the biju within me, Naruto explained. I see. Though it is interesting to see a ten tails, I hear that each tail gained shows that a person has or has the potential to reach orders of magnitude greater levels of power higher than their previous power, Azazel said. That is true but enough of the stories, I presume that we are here to talk about the peace treaty, I am more than willing to sign it, all you have to do is tell me about it, Naruto said. Right well the treaty is known as the Kuo Treaty as well since it was signed by in Kuo Town. The basics of the treaty is that no faction can openly show aggression to another and we are required to aid any faction that has signed the treaty in their time of need, any acts of aggression can be met by a coalition army, Sirzex explained. All right then, the yokai faction agrees to the terms of the treaty, Naruto said. That is wonderful news to hear, Michael said. Now tell me about the Chaos Brigade, Naruto said seriously as he rested his head on his interlaced hands. The Chaos Brigade is made up of rogue elements from every known faction, in fact we just recently recovered from an attack carried out by the Norse god Loki when Odin came to sign the Pact Monument, Azazel said. What exactly is their goal? Naruto asked. Their leader is Ophis. Ophis' goal is to remove Great Red from the dimensional gap, she hired the rogues to help her with that goal, Sirzex said. But let me take a guess. The rogues don't care about her goal and are more concerned with furthering their own agendas using the power Ophis has given them is that correct? Naruto asked. That about summarizes their threat to all of us, but how did you know? Michael asked out of curiosity. Almost a month ago we were attacked by the hero faction of the Chaos Brigade and they kidnapped my wife, I disposed of them with ease, it was the dimension lost user, the true Longinus user and a few hero descendants, as a show of good faith I would like to hand these back to the devils, Naruto said as he summoned the demonic swords that were in Georg's possession from his pocket dimension. Thank you for giving us the demonic swords, this will be a great help to us in the fight against the Chaos Brigade, Sirzex said. Before you go, take these, Naruto said as he handed a pouch containing ten Horishin Kanai. These Kanai are for your teleportation technique right? Azazel asked. Keep one on your person and hand the rest out to those likely to encounter the Chaos Brigade then I will be able to come to your aid in an instant, Naruto said. Thank you for everything Naruto Dono, we will be taking our leave now, we shall contact you on a convenient time to hold the event for the Pact Monument signing, Sirzex said as all three leaders bowed before exiting the room. Are you alright dear? Yasaka asked as she heard her mate sigh. It seems that my hunch of us having traitors in the faction might be true after all. It seems I have a lot of cleaning up to do, a storm is coming, I can feel it, Naruto said cryptically. Yasaka moaned out in bliss as her fourth orgasm caused her brain to overload with pleasure, she felt her juices flow in between her legs as the pleasure in her loins was prolonged by the thrusting of her mate's manhood into her, each deep plunge teasing her cervix and causing her to see white, she slumped onto her mate, rest her head against his muscled chest, Naruto wrapped his arms around her, pulling her close as he continued to pound into her. Yasaka Haim. I am close, Naruto groaned out as he felt her walls clamping down on him. Come inside my mate, fill my womb with your seed as only you have the right to, Yasaka moaned out, 
Naruto shouted out her name as he sprayed his warm semen into her waiting womb, Yusaka herself having a prolonged orgasm as she felt herself being filled by her mate. We should rest now. You've got a busy day tomorrow. We wouldn't want any of your clones to pop by accident now would we? Especially if they were in the middle of something important, Yusaka said as she lay her head against Naruto's chest, his heartbeat calming her and lulling her to sleep. She used one of her tails to pull the covers up on them and sighed in contentment. She looked up at her mate and saw that he had already fallen asleep probably lulled into slumber by her scent which he found soothing. She smiled happily before letting sleep take her. The city of Kyoto was a throve of activity during the day as the various yokai species went about living their daily lives. All around the same blonde-haired male could be seen helping people out and talking to them. Using shadow clones, Naruto was able to carry out his job as leader of the yokai faction well and made sure that each and every person was cared for. He made each of them feel important and treasured and this helped to motivate the people knowing that they had a leader who cared about their well-being and was willing to listen and help. Of course creating so many shadow clones would normally kill a person but thanks to Naruto's status as essentially a god-class being of the highest caliber, creating 300 shadow clones was not an issue. Currently the blonde-haired leader was in the private training field that had recently been completed at the back of his compound. He watched with a proud smile as Kuno rammed a completed Rasengan into a tree. Great job Kuno it took you a month to finish learning the Rasengan. I am so proud of you. It won't be long till you beat your old man now will it? Naruto said as he picked up his daughter and peppered her face with butterfly kisses causing her to giggle. It won't be long now. I am going to take your position from you father. You better watch out. Kuno said. Is that so? Well then this old man still has much to teach you, Naruto said before tickling his daughter until she begged for him to stop. The two turned around when they heard the sound of someone clearing their throat behind them. As much as I enjoy the sight of you two spending family time, Naruto you have a meeting with Azazel regarding the Chaos Brigade soon and it might be a good idea to attend in person, Yusaka said as she walked out of the house. Do you have to go? But I wanted to spend more time with you, Kuno pouted when she learnt that her father had to leave for his work, Yusaka couldn't help but smile at how close the two were, despite Naruto's absence in Kuno's early life, they were able to bond and connect with each other well. Now now, your father has important duties, this meeting will be important in ensuring peace and safety for all of us, if you behave and continue your Rasengan training I promise that it'll make you ramen for dinner, Yusaka said trying to resist the urge to just hug her cute little daughter. Really. Mommy will make her ramen tonight. Then Kuno will be a good girl and continue training, Kuno said as she went off to continue her training her previous sadness all but forgotten. She really reminds me of me when I was younger, Naruto said with a warm smile as he watched his daughter concentrate and slowly form the Rasengan in her hand. Kuno. You need to work on forming it faster, it's good training for your chakra control too, make sure you don't exhaust yourself and take lots of breaks in between. Naruto told her and Kuno nodded her head in understanding before returning her focus back to her current task. Well let's get the meeting over with, some devils are supposed to drop by in a week's time for their school field trip if my memory serves me correctly, is it true that Azazel will be accompanying them? Naruto asked Yusaka as they walked through the house, he grabbed his cloak and put it on, tying the gold rope at the front to keep it from falling off. Yes. Azazel is their teacher and will be accompanying the group as a chaperone together with a Valkyrie who became a devil, the students are all second years and notable devils that will be coming are the current Red Dragon Emperor, holder of the Vitra's sacred gears, a sword birth user and a twilight healing user, there is also one angel and the wielder of Durandal, Yusaka said. A Valkyrie became a devil. That's odd. What happened there? I didn't think that any of the battle maidens of the Norse would willingly become a devil, and since why is Azazel babysitting kids? Has he gone from a pervert to a pedophile? Naruto mused as they walked towards the office, waving to the people along the way. Well, apparently the Valkyrie got left behind by Odin during one of his visits and had to be taken in by a devil. Supposedly he forgot all about her because he was too busy at a titty bar, Azazel is helping out with the sacred gear users as part of the treaty. I hear it's because and I quote I've got a lot of free time, Yusaka explained as they entered the office, Naruto took a seat at the desk while Yusaka stood next to him, they continued their idle chatter to pass the time, discussing current affairs, minor events that have happened and also some possible options going forward. Naruto-sama, Yusaka-sama, 
Azazel Sama is here, a voice from the other side of the door said. Please let him in, Naruto said. The doors opened and Azazel casually strolled in wearing a black blazer over a white shirt and black pants. I take it this is your teaching outfit. I have to admit that it suits you well, Naruto commented. Nice to see you too kid, let's get started shall we? Azazel said as he handed a folder to Naruto and an exact copy to Yusaka. That folder contains all the current information we have on the Chaos Brigade, its current members, their actions and their abilities, although there is a group that eludes us, Azazel said as Naruto and Yusaka went over the contents of the folder, to Naruto this was looking more and more like a bingo book, there were even bounties inside there. Are the Koa's brigade actually evil in cause or is it the individual factions within the organization that are causing problems? Naruto asked. Well I feel it's more the individual factions, why Ophis would choose to hire such loonies is beyond me, I mean all she wants is to get great red out of the dimensional gap, some factions have shown little hostile actions like the valley team who has helped us out on more than one occasion, Azazel explained. Ah yes the white dragon emperor and his team, according to this file and everything else my newly reactivated spy network has gathered. He only wants to fight strong opponents and isn't actually malicious or evil in any way and neither is his team. And as to the faction that's missing they would be the hero faction. A group of human sacred gear wielders whose leader wanted to prove the superiority of humanity and protect them from the dangers of the supernatural, what a loon, he was the true Longinus user too although he is dead now, together with Georg and Heracles, I don't know who else is in that group except for a blade blacksmith user, the dimension lost user and the annihilation maker user, Naruto said as he tossed his own file at Azazel. Thanks for sharing the information, your spy network is still leagues ahead of mine it seems Gaki. Azazel said as he went through the information in Naruto's own file. I was raised by the best spymaster in a world of stealth and assassinations, anything less than the best would be a mockery to my godfather, I suggest you compile it into a book and hand it out, we could call it the bingo book or something, the devils have something similar called the peace collect I believe, it would be good to give everyone a heads up in case they run into trouble, Naruto suggested. I'll get to work on that, thanks for the info. How's being the leader of the Kyoto Yokai faction treating you? Has the paperwork finally defeated you? I saw your clones running all around the city, neat idea by the way, Azazel said. This coming from the governor general who pushes all the work to his subordinates, no I have the way to beat paperwork already so I see no problem with it, in fact most of my time is spent relaxing or with my family, it's only things that require my personal attention that is really troublesome. Naruto answered, he chuckled when Azazel was on his hands and knees. Please oh great Naruto-sama teach me your technique for defeating the vile evil that is paperwork. I've had to do more than double the paperwork now due to the alliance and thanks to the kids I have to look after, Azazel pleaded. As much as I would love to help you the shadow clone is a technique unique to me and only works for me, even Yusaka can't use this method but I have to admit I am surprised that you started babysitting kids, have you been demoted from a pervert to a pedophile now? Naruto said. No, I am just helping out the current red dragon emperor who happens to be a pawn in the peerage of Sirzek's little sister, he's an interesting kid, Azazel said. Interesting in what way? He only recently became a devil and yet his growth rate seems amazing, although I have heard some odd things about him, Naruto trailed off. For one thing he is a pervert obsessed with building a harem. And despite that he still has a heart and isn't some man whore who goes around devouring women, in fact he has quite a unique skill of drawing people to him and helping them to heal unknowingly, that ability might be the greatest next to his tenacity, the kid's improvement rate is crazy, I mean he did start off as probably the worst devil ever but he's come a long way, his progress is faster than Valis was and he was considered impressive in my mind already, Azazel explained. I look forward to meeting the kid then, he'll be visiting Kyoto next week correct? Naruto asked. That's right, the kids were coming here for a field trip, if it was alright with you I would like to show them around the yokai faction, you would also get to meet some of the up and coming members of the factions, Azazel requested. Of course, get in touch with me once you people have arrived in Kyoto and we can work something out, I'll need to clear it with the troublesome council first though, Naruto said. I see councils, advisors and elders are always troublesome no matter which faction you are huh. Sears X has this same problem, I am so glad I don't have to deal with that crap, 
I am sure Michael shares my sentiment, Azazel said with a chuckle. Don't remind me, those old geezers have been trying to get me under their thumbs in so many different ways that I am extremely tempted to boot them out with a Rasengan enema. Naruto groaned out, when he had been first handed over the title by Yasaka, the council was in uproar and were against him becoming the leader only to be silenced by his power, then after that they tried to get him to take more mates stating how it would be beneficial to ensure that his powers were passed on, of course that idea was quickly shot down by Yasaka who let out so much killing intent that activity in the city stopped for that moment. Anyway, how goes the cleanup of your faction? Azazel asked, the previous jovial mood gone and replaced with a serious one. I've gotten rid of all the people in the list and honestly they disgust me. Most of them betray their faction for power and the standard other payments. Heck I've incinerated a couple of them just because they chose to betray the yokai faction for a shot at Yusaka Haim, but those people were just small fries, none of them would have known where Yusaka would be or how to sneak someone past the detection barriers, I believe that there is another traitor within the council of course thanks to that suspicion, I've been able to strip them of most of their power. Naruto said. What do you think the Chaos Brigade's next move will be? Azazel asked out of curiosity. I think the hero faction will be attacking Kyoto again, to try and take revenge for their fallen comrades, I say just let them try, bunch of idiots, as to the other factions, I think that the key player to worry about is Rizvam, Naruto said. The descendant of Lucifer. But he hasn't made any movements, Azazel asked with a quirked eyebrow. The fact that he is allied with the Chaos Brigade when he couldn't be bothered to give a rat's ass about the Devil Civil War is already troubling enough, add to that the fact that he is a super devil like Sirzex and his level of insanity, it is troubling enough as it is, Valis situation showcases firsthand how crazy that bastard is, Naruto said. I'll concur with you on that, anyway, I'd best be going back to Kuo, don't want the kids getting into any sort of trouble. I'll see you next week kid, Azazel said with a casual wave and escorted himself out of the office. I'll see you next week you pervy old man, Naruto retorted, Azazel merely chuckled before teleporting away, Naruto let out a sigh once Azazel left, by the sage acting all serious like that was painful. Hum, it seems that Kuno is behaving, the clone I left to watch over just dispelled. Her chakra control is getting better and her Rasengan is improving. Naruto commented offhandedly as he stood up from the desk and stretched his body, he flipped through the paperwork bin to see if anything required his immediate attention, since there was none, he pulled his wife along back towards their home so that she could get to work preparing the reward for Kuno which had him salivating at the thought. You know, I don't know who is more rewarded in this situation, you are Kuno, Yusaka said with a giggle as they passed by the yokai population who greeted them warmly on the way back home. Father, mother, you're back, Kuno shouted as she barreled into Naruto who picked her up and started spinning around with her in his arms earning giggles from her. That's right we just got done with the meeting and now I can spend some time with my daughter while your mother goes and prepares your reward for being a good girl. Now why don't we go outside and see what you can do while your mother gets to work on that ramen, Naruto said as he placed Kuno on his shoulders much to her joy. She was cheering all the way about getting to eat ramen for dinner especially her favorite ramen prepared by her mother, Yusaka simply shook her head at how childish Naruto could be and how he egged on such behavior in Kuno but she let a gentle smile grace her lips before heading off into the kitchen. Great job Kuno, you're improving very quickly, just keep working on it and maybe you can become a ten tail like me, Naruto said as he watched on proudly. Kuno was now able to form a Rasengan in one hand although she still took some time to do it but this was already a far bigger improvement than what he was doing when he was her age. Nay, Otu-sama, can you tell me a story from your old world? Kuno asked with a cute head tilt. Of course dear, now what would you like to hear? Naruto said as he sat down under a tree and sat Kuno down on his lap. I want to hear the story of the man who gave up everything in the hopes of peace, Kuno said. Well all right then, there once was a shinobi named Itachi Uchiha, Naruto started as he retold the story of Itachi Uchiha and how he embraced the will of fire, sacrificing everything for the sake of the peace he believed in and how he embodied the ideals of a true shinobi by persevering and dealing with the hatred despite being put in the worst possible circumstances. Scene change. Kuno. Kuno. Now where could she have run off to? Hmm, what's going on over there? Naruto said as he was searching for his wayward daughter, 
The two were out to go meet Azazel and his students only they had decided to go on a detour for ice cream and the two had somehow been separated. Naruto shrugged and continued walking towards the meeting point. He heard a shocked scream and then someone crying and immediately recognized it as his daughter. He focused on the seal that was on her and teleported to her side. What's the matter Kuno? Are you hurt? Is someone trying to hurt you? Tell daddy so he can give the person some corrective surgery, Naruto said as he picked Kuno up and hugged her protectively. I dropped my ice cream. It's all gone now. Kuno cried out while Naruto laughed nervously. It's all right there Kuno. Tell you what. He'll let you buy another one later but you have to promise not to tell your mom all right. Naruto said. Honestly he wasn't surprised that she had dropped her cone. She usually got them stacked so high that it was almost comical watching someone of her stature carry it. Really. You will get me more ice cream. Yay. You are the best Otu-sama. Kuno cheered her earlier sadness forgotten. Naruto simply chuckled at his daughter. She had a serious sweet tooth that Yasaka had given him an earful about and he still remembered that time when he gave in to Kuna's request of sweets and she ended up running all over the house the entire night due to a sugar high. Later alright. We need to go meet with our guests. Let's get going. We don't want to be late and give them a bad impression now do we? Naruto said as he placed Kuno on his shoulder. She held on to his hair and they speed off towards the agreed meeting point. When they reached there, they saw that Azazel and the others were already there waiting for them. It's good to see all of you. On behalf of everyone from the Kyoto Yokai faction I would like to welcome you all to Kyoto. I hope you have found your accommodation comfortable and I wish you a pleasant stay here, Naruto greeted. Thank you for taking the time to take care of us Naruto-sama, the students said with a bow. It's fine no bowing please. I am not one for formalities as Azazel can attest to, now then let's get this tour started shall we? Naruto said as he led the group down the steps of the shrine that had been their meeting place. Oh wow. Everyone here looks so happy, it's quite different to devil territory, Issei commented. It is indeed Red Dragon Emperor, is the bigotry in devil society still there? I remember when Sirzex invited me to the underworld, so many devils tried to get me into their peerages and I think I got blacklisted from the underworld for how disrespectful I was to them. Honestly some of the power mad fools couldn't take no for an answer in addition to being so resistant to change, Naruto commented offhandedly as he led them towards a key district of the territory. So Aero Daidenshi, what are you planning on doing while you are here anyway? Naruto asked Azazel. Maybe hit a few bars, get some girls, just have a good time here while being a babysitter I guess, say why don't you join me? I am sure you could use a break from all the duties as a leader, Azazel said. If I were to go with you, I am likely to end up in some situation that will earn me Yasaka's wrath and I'd rather not have to placate my wife, need I remind you what happened the last time she found me with you. Naruto said and Azazel shuddered when he remembered how Yasaka had beaten him black and blue for trying to corrupt her Naruto. Whoa. How are you in so many places at once? Issei asked as everyone shared the same gobsmacked expressions looking at the clones helping out in the area. Well that is my secret on how I run this place, shadow clones, they are real copies of me that can do almost anything I can and think and act like me, I use them for paperwork, to help out the citizens and also to handle troublesome meetings and talks, Naruto commented as though it was a normal thing. Of course this only works for you since for anyone else having this many clones out would kill them from chakra exhaustion, Azazel said. Granted when I was still a human I could create up to 3000 clones and now since becoming a jubi I can create that number without breaking a sweat, Naruto said, this caused many of their jaws to widen comically and the young students to wonder how much stronger the jubi is compared to the kubi. Right then, Azazel there is a pretty good bar at the end of this street here if you wanted to go there. In fact I think they have something similar to Firebrand Sake in there. This is the market district of Kyoto where most of the shops are located. Beyond that gate are the various residential districts and the clan compounds are located behind that, Naruto explained as he went through the layout of the city. That is quite an interesting layout for the city, and it's peaceful. Everyone seems to respect you greatly Naruto-sama, Rossweiss commented. I just treat them the way that I would want to be treated, it's no big deal. Anyway that is a basic tour of the yokai area of Kyoto, feel free to walk around and peruse the wares that are available, I need to get my daughter back home it seems that I have made her bored to the point of falling asleep with this tour, Naruto said as he smiled warmly while hearing the soft snores from Kuno. 
Thank you for the hospitality Naruto-sama, the students said. I'll see you around Gaki, Azazel said. It was no problem, and Azazel please try not to cause trouble in my territory while you get yourself wasted, Naruto said before disappearing in a yellow flash. Hey sensei, how strong exactly is the current leader of the yokai faction, I couldn't feel his power but he could create so many of these clones, Issei asked and the others seemed curious to the answer to the question as well. Before he became a yokai, that is to say when he was a human, he had power equal to Ophis due to some unique circumstances, now I would say that he is at least that strong maybe even equal in power to Great Red, it's hard to say because he has a mutated form of Senjutsu that only he has, Azazel said with a finger on his chin as he contemplated his words. Mutated Senjutsu? Issei asked. Yes his unique variation of Senjutsu called Six Paths Senjutsu, it's quite the power up, he can manipulate the elements and his chakra control is increased to the point where an attack that required 10 hand seals can be performed with none, Azazel explained. I think we should be heading back, we don't want the other students to think that you all are getting special treatment, we should meet at Issei's room tonight to discuss anything that might come up, Rosswise suggested, everyone nodded and went back to the join the other students while Azazel went exploring on his own. Scene change. Naruto was seated at his desk, Yusaka standing next to him, his elbows rested against the table and his fingers were interlaced as he looked emotionlessly at the person in front of him, he was at least a meter tall, covered in golden fur, face wrinkled and creased, he as carries a staff-like weapon, prayer beads on his forehead, wearing shades and smoking a pipe, this man was Sun Wukong. So you are telling me the Chaos Brigade are planning to attack Kyoto again? Naruto said his tone devoid of any emotion sending chills down Yasaka's spine, Naruto was fiercely protective of the people of Kyoto and saw them as his family. I was out dealing with the Chaos Brigade and I happened to hear them discussing the attack after you foiled their attempt to use Yusaka to open a dragon gate, I don't know if they want to try again or are just out for revenge since their leaders are all dead, what are you planning to do with the true Longinus anyway? I can sense its power on you, Sun Wukong commented. The true Longinus is in my possession for safekeeping, while I may have agreed to the Kuo Treaty I still do not fully trust the other factions just yet especially the Devil Council considering they mercilessly hunted the Nekomata species to near extinction for the actions of one and they are to blind to see the error of their ways, I hold not hate for the current four Satans though as they have shown that they are different and possess the capacity to change, Naruto said. I want question you on that since I agree with regards to the Devil Council, bunch of power-hungry bigots, although I do question the need for another deterrent since you already are among the strongest beings alive, anyway what do you plan to do about the imminent attack? Sun Wukong asked. I can't exactly cut loose so easily without repercussions. Besides an additional bargaining chip is always helpful for future use, if possible I would like you to stay and help me weed out a traitor in the council, only someone from the council could have allowed the Chaos Brigade to enter the city to get to Yusaka and I believe they will try again, so if possible I would like your assistance in the matter, you can leave the hero faction to me, according to my own intel they don't have many strong members left, Naruto said. I don't mind helping out since my orders are to deal with the Chaos Brigade but what do you want me to do with the traitor? Sun Wukong asked. Capture him. Kill him I don't really care, just as long as he is dealt with, Naruto said. I will handle the situation with my own discretion then. By the way Naruto-sama if you don't mind, Sun said while rubbing the back of his neck and giving a grin. Go ahead. Charge whatever you want to me, consider it payment for the information and your assistance in the coming situation, Naruto said while waving him out of the office, Sun Wukong gave a bow and uttered his thanks before taking his leave and meeting up with his dragon companion. So what do you plan to do about the upcoming attack? Yasaka asked. I will simply show the Chaos Brigade why it is unwise to attack us and show them that my earlier mercies towards them is not meant to be taken lightly, for now we make the plans for the coming attack, Naruto said as he unraveled a map of the city and started scribbling on it. Scene change. Naruto was seated on his throne in the room that was connected to all the ley lines of Kyoto, Yusaka was seated next to him trying to keep a neutral expression but sneaking worried glances at him from time to time, this was the worst part of any plan, waiting. It's time, they have begun their assault, Naruto commented, the doors to the room were opened and Azazel together with one of the generals in the yokai army walked in. Naruto-sama, the chaos brigade are attacking us, none of our weapons are working, the general said. 
I don't think I need to tell you who exactly is attacking since your connection to the ley lines should allow you to sense them if your senjutsu didn't allow you to already, Azazel said. Yes, it would seem that the three higher-ups of the hero faction want to wage a desperate battle for revenge, the Dimension Lost user is providing a strong defense to add to the offensive power of the Annihilation Maker user, and there is that Blade Blacksmith user, Jean I believe her name was, Naruto said casually as though he was commenting on the weather. Naruto-sama, they have managed to get through the first barrier and are making their way towards the secondary barrier now, we have no idea how they managed to slip in, the general said. I have an idea but it'll leave that matter to my friend, Azazel what are your students up to? Naruto asked. I have them helping out although the Valkyrie is a little useless right now, Azazel said while looking away. You got her shit face drunk didn't you, you of all people should know that Valkyries can't hold their alcohol. Naruto said with a sigh and head shake. Naruto-sama what do you propose we do? The general asked. Have the civilians moved into the shelters and reinforce the third and fourth defensive line, have everyone pull back to behind the secondary wall, Naruto ordered as he got up and grabbed his cloak from the nearby rack. Where are you going Naruto-sama? The general asked. I am going to personally greet our guests and show them why we are not a faction to be trifled with, would you like to come along Azazel? Naruto asked. This should make for an interesting show, count me in kid, Azazel said. Naruto just chuckled and in a yellow flash, Yusaka, Azazel and Naruto were out of the room. They appeared in front of the yokai defenders as well as the devils and angel that had volunteered in the defense of Kyoto, the landscape between the first and second barriers was a mess, the pavement was upturned and once smooth flat land was now cratered and uplifted, debris littered the ground and smoke could be seen from fires that danced around the area. Naruto scowled as he saw the army of monsters that had stopped to focus their attention on him. I will say this once, leave now, there will be no second chance, Naruto said, his tone sending chills down everyone's spine. We will have our revenge for Sao Sao and the others, Georg proclaimed, Naruto narrowed his eyes and flung a Resenshuriken at them only to have it be absorbed by dimension lost, he grumbled in annoyance for a moment before materializing a truth-seeking orb and using it to kill Georg. Now that the troublesome person is gone, I can deal with you monsters, I have just a technique that will make this place much nicer at the same time, Naruto said as he ran through three simple hand seals before landing on the snake seal, the ground shook as trees sprouted around him. Mokuden Haijutsu. Jukai Koden. Naruto intoned as he extended his arms, the trees seemed to follow his movement as they extended and grew to ensnare the monsters, they seemed to be absorbed into the wood as the foliage became denser and turned into a forest. Mokuden is particularly suited to restraining monsters due to its unique capability to absorb energy to aid in growth, and it seems I have ensnared an unintended prize, Naruto mused as he walked up to the forest, Yusaka and Azazel following close behind him. They walked to a spot where they found Jean being restrained by the trees, she was trying to use her sacred gear but failed to even summon a smidgen of power. As I was saying, the Mokuden absorbs energy so don't bother trying to use your sacred gear, TCH, it seems the Annihilation Maker user took the opportunity to escape, he is a slippery one, but I am sure we can extract some information from this one, Naruto said as he transformed the wood around Jean into shackles before surrounding her in a bubble. I am sure you can handle things here right Azazel. She will be in your care from now on, do as you wish, I need to go visit a friend before enjoying a calming bowl of ramen, I'll leave the rest to you Yusaka Haim, k thanks bye, Naruto said before flashing away, Yusaka was blinking for a moment before she had a tick mark on her head and screamed out about irresponsible husbands. So Red Dragon Emperor tell me what exactly is your dream, Naruto said as he took a sip of tea. Cracking one eye open to stare at Issei, around Naruto were the devils that had been to Kyoto and since they had helped out in the defense of Kyoto when it was under attack by the Chaos Brigade, Naruto felt it would be good to get to know them better. Well I want to become the harem king and be surrounded by breasts. Lots of breasts sir, Issei proclaimed, Naruto chuckled at the enthusiastic pawn. That is certainly a, unique goal, Naruto replied, Aero Senen, your legacy lives on which is damn scary if you ask me, Naruto thought. I still think it wasn't necessary for you to go out of your way to talk to us like this Naruto-sama, after all you must be pretty busy running Kyoto, especially after what happened with the Chaos Brigade, Kiba said. It's no problem, there's shadow clones for all the useless menial labor, 
Why would I do anything unimportant on my own when I can just make 3,000 clones and have them do my job for me? Besides, they are basically me, so I see no problem in getting to know all of you. After all, listening to all of your dreams I can't help but peace is truly here to stay. After all it is the job of the youth to shine brighter than the older generation as we disappear into the background no. Naruto mused. Issei Hayadu, you are an interesting existence, you will go far. Never change, you draw people to you like a moth to a flame. I look forward to seeing you develop as a devil, you know you remind me of myself a long time ago, except without the perversion, here is a piece of advice my teacher once taught me, those who abandon the mission are scum but those who abandon their friends are worse than scum, especially in these coming times with darkness looming ahead, keep your friends close to you, you never know when and where they will strike, Naruto advised, he finished up his tea and got up from the table. Well, you kids need to return back to your classmates and I need to get back to my office before my wife starts going around Kyoto looking for me. Devils under Rias Grimori, I look forward to seeing you all fight to your fullest potential at the rating game against Saroorg Bale. Sears X has kindly offered me an invitation to the event and hearing all of you speak. I have no doubt it will be a rating game that will be talked about. Naruto said before waving goodbye and flashing back to his office where Yusaka was already waiting for him, she had a dangerous smile on her face and was tapping her foot impatiently, she gestured to the pile of paperwork and shook her head saying that he had to do all of them without the use of clones, throughout Kyoto, a pained groan could be heard as the leader of the yokai faction faced an enemy worse than any primordial god. Sometime later and a lot of headaches for Naruto. There, that's the last one that needs my attention today, but seriously, some of these could have been handled by clones you know, Naruto drawled out as he had his head on the table, his brain completely frazzled by all the paperwork. Oh I know, I sneaked some of the less important ones in for you to do, consider it payback for leaving me to clean up after the Chaos Brigade's attack, Yusaka said as she giggled and walked towards Naruto, making a show out of it as he roamed over her approaching figure with his eyes, his exhaustion clearly forgotten. Well then if my dear husband needs some motivation then I as a loving wife should provide it for you know. Yasaka whispered into his ear as she circled around his desk, Naruto growled before jumping up and pinning his wife to the wall. You just know how to rile me up don't you? You just want me to bend you over the desk and plow into you till you can't walk right. You horny vixen. Naruto growled into her ear before capturing her lips in a searing kiss, when they broke apart. Yusaka had a dusting of pink and her breathing was ragged. Who am I to deny my leader and mate if that is what he so wishes? The fact that I happen to have an itch to scratch is just a plus point for me, Yusaka whispered into Naruto's ear, Naruto growled once more, his feral instincts taking over, he made a single hand seal and activated the silencing seals placed around the office before proceeding to ravage his horny vixen. Sometime later, Naruto and Yasaka were walking out of the tower in order to return back to their home to have some personal time with Kuno at Naruto's insistence since the clones would be able to handle anything and nothing short of an emergency would require their personal attention so Naruto suggested spending an afternoon out in the park with Kuno. Yasaka had her arms wrapped around Naruto's as she held it in her cleavage. There was a clear limp in her gait after their session of rough lovemaking earlier. While Yasaka was by no means a slouch in the stamina department. She was nowhere near the stamina juggernaut her husband was and usually their sessions ended with her having a limp in her step or her passing out due to the pleasure. Her mate really did spoil her so, always giving in to her demands to make love whenever they felt like it, they've pretty much done it in every room in the house except for Kunis at some point in time since his awakening, Yasaka felt the heat reach her cheeks and her loins were starting to ache, she quickly banished such thoughts since it would undoubtedly lead to another session of tender loving care from her husband. They reached the doors to their house and upon entering and uttering a greeting, found it oddly empty, while Naruto rarely had servants around the house since clones covered for them and he preferred his home to be more private, there should be at least a few of them around looking after Kuno, his question was answered when they heard footsteps coming from behind and was greeted by Rin, Kuno's caretaker while Yusaka and Naruto were busy who had just come from the back of the compound. Naruto-sama, Yusaka-sama, I was not expecting you back so soon, I thought the both of you would have more work to do, forgive me for not greeting you earlier, Kuno has been training in the back of the house and I have been there keeping an eye on her, Rin explained as she bowed to the leaders of Kyoto. It's fine Rin, 
Thanks for looking after Kuno for us, she hasn't been up to anything has she? Yasaka asked. Well, she attempted to prank the rest of the kitsune by putting laxatives in the water however her prank was foiled because she failed in hiding her excitement to see the results, Rin said with a frown. Oh she did she, Yasaka said in a voice that was a little too sweet and promised punishment for her troublemaking daughter. That's my girl, but I think I'll need to work on her skill some more, no prank master can be caught in the act, that's right once I teach you the ways of the prank master no one in Kyoto will be safe from our wrath. Naruto said while deviously rubbing his hands together and letting out an evil chuckle, he winced in pain though when Yasaka pulled on his cheek. Wouch. Wet wo wheeze wasaka. Naruto begged as Yasaka continued to merciless pinch her cheeks. You will not be corrupting our dear daughter into a prankster you hear me. Nor will you be taking her on a prank spree, do you understand me mister? I do not need Kuno running around and causing trouble, she is an easily impressionable girl and I do not want you corrupting her with your bad habits, you already made her a ramen addict in addition to her sweet tooth, Yasaka said, Naruto nodded as best he could so that Yasaka would let go of his cheek, he rubbed his hand to try and soothe the pain. I may have agreed not to teach Kuno how to be a prankster but I never agreed to suggesting pranks for her to do, Naruto muttered only to find Yasaka's hand in front of his face moving in a claw-like motion. Did you say something dear? Yasaka said in an overly sweet voice. Nothing honey, let's go see our daughter so that we can spend some time together shall we? Naruto said quickly trying to prevent his wife from assaulting his poor face any longer, Yasaka merely hummed and walked towards the back of the compound, followed by Naruto and Rin, they saw Kuno resting on the porch after finishing her training and all around the trees in the compound were destroyed from a mixture of fox fire and the Rasengan. Hey there Kuno, you're working hard I see. Naruto said as he ruffled his daughter's head before walking into the field and regrowing all of the trees that she had destroyed. I am going to make you so proud of me too San when I show you how strong I become. Kuno proclaimed. Naruto chuckled and scooped Kuno into his arms, placing a kiss on her forehead as he walked into the house. I am already proud of you Kuno, but to see you grow up so strong so fast, you are a true hard worker Kuno, tell you what, if you can get the Rasengan formed in one second by the end of the month then I promise to teach you more cool techniques, Naruto said. Deal. But why are you and mommy back so early? Kuno asked and tilted her head to the side cutely, today was the middle of the week and considering that the Chaos Brigade had just attacked recently, she thought that her parents would have been extremely busy. Well there wasn't anything that required our personal attention and the weather is great this afternoon so I thought that we should spend the day as a family in the park. Naruto said. Really? Can you push me on the swing daddy? Kuno asked with expectant eyes. Yes you daddy will push you on the swing, now why don't you get cleaned up and changed while we go prepare some food? Since you've been training so hard, we will even get you ice cream, Yasaka said. Kuno cheered happily and freed herself from her father's arms before rushing off to get ready. She gets that energetic side and hardworking mindset from you, Yasaka said with a fond smile as she watched Kuno run towards her room. But she does have your smarts, well let's go get started on that food, as much as I would love to have clones do it, why don't we do this together? Naruto suggested as he pulled Yasaka towards the kitchen, Rin simply shrugged and decided to go wait by Kuno's room in case she needed anything. Scene change underworld, rating game between Rias and Saroorg. Naruto. Yasaka and Kuno were walking towards the VIP box of the stadium in order to watch the rating game that would be going on between Rias Grimori and Saraorg Bale. Naruto had been invited to this event by both Sirzex and Azazel and learning of the two devils made him all the more interested in watching this battle unfold, he was sure that these two, together with Sona Sitri, were the three current young devils to look out for and had great potential, what interested him the most about this match was that Saraorg lacked any magical power yet was still called the strongest young devil and Rias and her peerage were trained by Azazel. Greetings, Michael, Azazel, Sirzex, Ajuka, Seraphal, Falbium, I want to thank you for inviting me and my family to the raiding game, Naruto said as he greeted the leaders of the three biblical factions. Think nothing of it Naruto, besides I am pretty sure even if we didn't invite you. You would still find some way to watch this game, you had that glint in your eye when someone or something interest you while you were talking to Issei after the attack on Kyoto. Azazel said, 
Naruto simply chuckled before leading his family to their assigned seats. Along the way he greeted Odin and shared a few jokes with the perverted god. He narrowed his eyes but still gave a simple greeting to Hades since he seemed to be harboring a good deal of ill intent. Kuno sat down in between her parents and immediately got started on munching some popcorn, tuning out everything else as she satisfied her sweet tooth with the caramel-flavored snack. So who do you think will win Naruto-kun? Yasaka asked as she waited patiently for the participants of the rating game to begin. It's hard to say Yasaka-chan. Saroorg is no doubt skilled in the fact that he was proclaimed the strongest young devil despite not having any special demonic powers shows that he is a true genius of hard work. I think it will come down to a close match, but I have yet to see Saroorg Bale's peerage and have only met part of Rias Grimori's peerage so I can't really make any decision yet, Naruto said, watching with rapt attention as the competitors walked into the middle of the stadium. He smirked when he saw that the game mode chosen for this rating game was Dice Figure, he was even more interested when he noted that Saroorg had a living sacred gear on his team, the mid-tier Longinus Regulus Nemea. So what do you think now Naruto-kun? Yasaka asked as she watched the first match be decided as a straight-up one-on-one battle. Well I think now this match can really go either way, it seems like the two knights will be going against each other in this first match, my money is on the Grimori for this one, but if you ask me overall, it will come down to the Red Dragon Emperor and Saroorg, Naruto said, his hunch was proven correct when Kiba defeated Saroorg's knight. Well then it seems you are correct, the next round is a doubles matchup and it seems like Rias is sending out her two rooks against Saroorg's rook and knight. This one will be a close one I think, Yusaka commented. She smiled when she saw Kuno climb into her father's lap and snuggled her head into his chest, Naruto wrapped one arm around her as one of his tails wrapped around her body to keep her warm. Naruto hummed in agreement at his wife's observation as the second match of the game played out, when Saroorg's pieces seemed to be downed, Naruto frowned when both of Rias' rooks took their attention of their opponents before the match was officially called. And that is why you shouldn't take your eyes of the enemy until victory is confirmed, I wonder how this next match will play out, it will be interesting to see how the holy sword wielder does here since she has a natural leg up against the rest of the devils, Naruto said as he watched Zenobia and Gaspar take on Saroorg's bishop and rook. Well then, now that her advantage with her holy sword is gone what can they do? The other pair certainly has an advantage right now, Yusaka commented as she watched Zenobia's ability to wield Durandal be taken away by Saroorg's bishop. I wouldn't count them out just yet, especially not with the half-vampire kid, Naruto said as he smiled down at a now sleeping Kuno, Naruto's words were proven true when Gaspar sacrificed himself to give them a win. I think this is the matchup you've been looking forward to right Naruto-kun. A three-on-one match between Rias Pieces and Saroorg himself, you want to see it don't you, the power of the strongest young devil. But are you sure he can win? It's three-on-one and the two knights have strong anti-devil attacks especially the holy sword wielder, Yusaka commented as she watched the three-on-one battle commence. He truly has earned his place as the strongest young devil. For someone without any special demonic powers, his performance against the three of them is something else, Naruto commented as he watched the match end with three of Rias' pieces retired and Saroorg losing an arm. Guy and Lee, I think I might have just found someone like you too, except without the spandex and bushy brows, or the bowl haircut, or the sunset genjutsu, okay I just found the cooler version of you guys Naruto thought. Well then the next battle is going to be the two queens, who do you think will win this one? I think Rias has the advantage, her queen's ability to use holy lightning is a leg up for her, Yusaka said as the two queens faced each other in the arena. Well it depends, if memory serves me correctly, Saroorg's queen has the ability hole which would allow her to turn Rias queen's ability against her, so it depends on who is the more careful one, although Rias queen does have a greater attacking potential, Naruto commented. While she may have power she isn't exactly the most creative in its use, the strongest weapon is useless in the hands of someone who lacks the skill, Yusaka commented as Akino was eliminated by her own attack. They are still young in the grand scheme of things, give them some time to get better, besides, there is no greater motivator or teacher than defeat, Naruto said, he sat a little straighter while still being careful not to disturb the sleeping Kuno when the next matchup was announced. I take it the Red Dragon Emperor who is Rias Grimori's pawn interests you greatly. You rarely get that look in your eyes anymore, 
The last time you got that look was when you were close to inventing a new jutsu, Yusaka said with a giggle. At first I was mildly interested in him when I spoke to him, he reminds me a little of me when I was younger, only much more perverted and focused on breasts and a harem as well as friends rather than just friends, but after I did some digging and learnt of what he has gone through, I can't help but be interested in him, after all, his growth rate is astounding, Naruto said as Issei went into the field to take on Sarawarg's two remaining pieces. Is something up with him? He seems to have a lot of rage for some odd reason, and he seems very hostile, Yusaka commented. You are right, he does feel a little off, but it could just be stress or seeing his friends being defeated, you never know, Naruto said with a shrug and winced when Sarawarg forced his queen to retire out of fear that Issei might kill her. Now it was down to the last match, Sarawarg and his pawn Regulus against Rias and Issei. This is shaping up to be a very interesting game, truly these two groups of devils show great potential, I can't help but worry that something bad is about to happen though, her pawn seems a little off compared to when he was in Kyoto, did something happen to him? Yasaka asked as the match started and Issei went toe to toe with Sarawarg, even with his balance breaker, the match was largely even. I don't know. But this match is about to get really interesting, I wonder, can Issei win this match now? Naruto said as Sarawarg equipped Regulus Nemea, activating a subspecies balance breaker that really interested Naruto and made him wonder if he could do it for the true Longinus that he currently had in his possession. He winced as he saw Sarawarg take control of the match and start throwing Issei around thanks to the power boost from the Regulus Nemea balance breaker, Issei was thrown into a wall and when he got up, a mass of dark power erupted from his body and he started to enter his juggernaut drive. What do you think happened to him Naruto-kun? Yasaka asked as she felt the oppressive aura flood the stadium, Naruto pulled Kuno closer to him as she was jolted awake and started shake from the feeling of the aura, Naruto covered her with his own calming aura and she buried her head into her father's chest, taking comfort in his warm aura. Based on what I know, I think he is being influenced by the negative emotions of the past possessors of the boosted gear, I heard that the negative emotions of every user are stored and used to fuel the forbidden juggernaut drive of both divine dividing and boosted gear, Naruto mused as he felt Issei wage an internal struggle based on the fluctuations in the feel and potency of his aura. Should we be worried? Yasaka asked as the other people gathered in the VIP lounge were starting to tense up. I would be more worried about the kid, if he goes into juggernaut drive, he will die, but I have a feeling if he succeeds in ridding the spirits of the past possessors of their hatred then this rating game will truly go down in the history books, this reminds of the time when I faced Kurama's hatred, so Issei Hayadu, will you show us a new possibility or will you succumb to hatred? Naruto mused, eventually though Naruto's faith in Issei was proven as he pushed past the hatred and unlocked a new power, the power of the queen piece form of his balance breaker that he used to overpower Sarawark. You were right, he did show us a new possibility, I don't think such a form has ever been documented before, it seems your interest in him is not baseless after all, I hear that he has done things beyond belief with that boosted gear of his, Yusaka said as she watched Issei and Sarawarg continue to duke it out with Issei having a clear advantage. I have to admit though, Sarawarg is certainly tenacious, he has even passed out while still standing, this was truly an interesting rating game. Naruto said with a chuckle as the win was given to Rias since Sarawarg was unable to continue after passing out while still managing to stand. Well I think it's about time we head back, Kuno has fallen asleep again and I think we should get her to a proper bed, Naruto said as he smiled down at his sleeping daughter who was attempting to bury her face into his chest. I don't know she does look very comfortable in that position, maybe that's her new favorite sleeping spot. Yasaka said in a tone filled with mirth. Naruto rolled his eyes at her and stood up, shifting Kuno into a more comfortable position in his arms. He gave his goodbyes to all the leaders gathered there and thanked Sirzex and Azazel again for the invitation to the raiding game before teleporting home. When they got home, he tried to pry Kuno off him only for the young Nine Tails to mutter about wanting to stay with her father for the night. Naruto and Yasaka cooed at her cuteness and that night Kuno slept in the middle of her parents, feeling completely safe in their arms as she got the best sleep she ever had. Thanks for watching.